Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the Getting Together podcast. It is so cool to be back with you. And yes. I have my co-host, Ray. Yay! She is back. I'm alive. Hey, she's alive. Thank goodness. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, we need her. We need her on this podcast. Stop it. Absolutely. Stop. So uh, it is a really cool thing to have you along with us today. Yes. We are going to be interviewing Jesse Villas. Villas? I think, I, yes, there's a, there's a sure. H there. Uh, he is the <laughs> owner of The Porch, where we are currently filming. We film on Mondays at 10 a.m. And we hope you had a great holiday season and just uh looking forward to a wonderful new year in 2022 but yeah. we are excited for the things that are ahead and uh we are gonna do something new on the podcast so wait what's that gonna be how are we gonna connect people okay so here's the thing i thought getting together yes the name yes who would our guests like to get together with? You know that uh -huh. whole, if you could have dinner with three people, who would you have over for dinner? And people always get really intellectual and say, Mahatma Gandhi, and, <laughs> you know. Um, so I thought, let's give our guests a chance to say who they would like to get together with and, um, and maybe do like, one, you know, famous or infamous person, whatever, Ooh, infamous whatever. Okay, I'm just right. saying, and then maybe one local person, uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, because we could maybe make that happen for them. I don't know. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Yeah. So I thought we should start it off. Okay. And so I would love to know, yes. Jeremy Brinkerhoff. Yes. If Ray you could get together, <laughs> one day he'll get my name I right. Well, I don't. If you could get together with someone, anyone. Yeah. Um. Throughout time and space. Yes, throughout time and space. Continuum. Okay. Mm, that's a good one. Uh, I would say, my, my, so my kids, they ask this uh, from time to time, so we, we talk about this. Yeah. I would say one person that kind of comes up in my head mm -hmm. is... I'm going to be surprised. I know it. Hugh Jackman. <laughs> I knew it. Hugh Jackman. I knew I was going to be surprised. Yeah. Okay. Can so, you tell me why? Here's why. Here's why I think it'd be <laughs> fascinating to, yeah. to to be with Hugh Jackman and like sit down and kind of pick his brain. Right. Because he's a he's a man. He's like a, yes, he's like a he man. Yes, he is. Yes, he's a man. <laughs> I've, man. No, I've noticed. Yeah. <laughs> but he's like super talented. I remember the first time like I, I was familiar with Hugh Jackman as an actor. Yeah. It's the whole Wolverine oh, thing. Yeah. And, you know, like he's very handsome and yes. whatever. Uh, but then I find out like he sings and he dances. Yes, he and does. he's really Twinkle good toes. at those things as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. And so very Broadway. It, very, very, uh, very much a, a, just a one of those triple threats, you yeah. know? Um, but he's also a family man. He's been married a very long time. I've heard that. He's done all kinds of things like that aren't particularly Hollywood. I mean, he stays out of all the garbage. Yeah, he really does. You don't see him in papers. But he's or... super Hollywood. He is. Um, and I, I understand he had a, a live show that he does every so often. Mm-hmm. And he tours around, and there were people in the audience. Uh, there were some ladies, Aww. probably much like yourself. Yeah. Hey. Uh, cat calling. <laughs> yeah. Well. Okay. You know. So there we go. Uh, and and he actually like took a second. He's like, hey, you know what? I'm married. I'm faithful to my wife, and I just want to like. It. So like, there's there's this thing of like, okay. See, that how makes you, you love him all the more. How do you balance that? So that I think that's why I'd want to sit down with him. It's just like what not only what his story is, yeah. but then how he's how he's really managed to balance the craziness and sort of that the the gross part of Hollywood right. with like being an upstanding man. Like how, yes. how do you stay above the fray? These are the things you need to know as you rise to yes, fame. Yes, until, so, so I, it's, it's really, it's it's gonna be a plotting sort of thing of like, <laughs> I'm gonna be taking notes. So, okay, yeah, that's Hugh how I says. do it. Yes, Hugh says. So, I love that. Yeah, and I think it's one of those those neat stories too. I remember him talking about his dad um, and his dad was, I, I can't remember what path career-wise his dad was like, hey, this is kind of more where you should be going. And, yeah. and he was really interested in the arts and performing and then uh his dad came and saw one of his shows and just said absolutely this is like son this oh, is the direction that you yes. need to go and so those affirming things especially from fathers i think that's a really cool thing and so yeah. just um i don't know i i I, I love those aspects um so many people do have that father thing from their past so yeah. hearing someone who who's had uh something outside of their dad's purview yeah 
and then to be affirmed in that, I think it's really cool. So, Very cool. Hugh Jackman. There you go. Good one. I, I would join you on that. I would love to get together <laughs> with Hugh Jackman. For very different reasons, right? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. From an artistic standpoint, for mm-hmm. sure. Yes. Mm, purely. <clears throat> purely. Yes. And do you have someone local? That's a tough one. Uh, locally? Yeah. There's, honestly, there's, there's, oh, boy, that's a tough one for me because I think as we've gotten together with so many right. different people, we're, we're man, privileged. I'm fascinated yes. with the number of people that are in the area. I have heard stories of a guy that lives here now uh-huh. who defected from, I think, I want to say Czechoslovakia. Okay. And has a crazy story surrounding that. Um, and so I think it'd be, it'd be really interesting to, one track him down yes and then um hear his story of how he came to the united states yeah so i, love I think that, that would be really really cool uh-huh so if any of you out there know this man <laughs> yes comment let us know we'd love to track him down and yeah have him on yeah hear that story make that dream happen for you jeremy oh my i would love to do that for you true. yeah all my dreams <laughs> so okay. how about you Ray oh, thank Chaloner. you thank you for asking um i I have several. I, it's very okay. hard to pick. I have a lot. I mean, Jimmy Kimmel. I would love not what? Jimmy Kimmel. Not Jimmy Kimmel. The other one. Fallon. Um, yes, thank you, Jimmy oh, Fallon. Okay, he's adorable. I think we could be friends. Okay. Um, I also think of um, uh, she's a singer on The Voice. Why am I blanking on her name? Oh, this isn't trivia. We didn't like dip into. No. Am I supposed to be guessing? Yes. Okay, first word. Yeah. Anyway, um, she's on The Voice currently. Like she's that. a judge on The Voice. Oh, um, and she uh-huh. won American Idol. Yes, she did. How can we get you Kelly out? Clarkson. Very, yes, we could be friends. She has a show. I want to <laughs> be on her show. She's very funny. Um, and maybe she would be on ours one day. She yes, is very obviously. funny. She's down to earth. Yeah. yeah. Um, very relatable. But I've got to say, in like the journalism world, because I've always been fascinated, it'd be Paul Harvey. That's okay. my yeah. For you youngsters out there, you might not know who that is, but... Worth looking up. Worth looking up. Yeah, for sure. I think he just, he had a beautiful voice. It was very radio. Um, It was kind of just a melody, the way he Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. would read things. Um, I appreciated his stories. Yeah, he's a really good storyteller. Yeah, and it was nostalgic for me. You know, as family trips, vacations. We didn't have the gadgets back then, so it was radio. And you'd get on AM and you're trying, you know, find. And it was always trying to find Paul Harvey. And it always seemed like he was always on. Okay. (laughs) Any time (laughs) of day, Paul Harvey was on. And, you know, and now you know the rest of the story. Oh, That was his tagline. And I think he was probably... I would do some research on that to see if he was kind of one of the first pioneers to have like a tagline. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, because he would always close with that. He'd always close with it. Now you know the rest of the story. Okay. I mean, years later, it's still in my head. It is. That's really cool. Yeah, good memories. I I like Paul Harvey. Mm -hmm. And and same same thing for us growing up. I remember my dad uh, listened to Paul Harvey and that was one of those like yep. kind of nostalgic things for me yes. and, and it was it's a it's kind of a soothing voice yeah. uh of that of that era of growing up yeah. and being on the radio so that's awesome yeah. all right paul harvey mm-hmm. yep. i like it and paul how about harvey. your local yokel my local yokel um i yeah i don't know i'd have to think longer about that i uh you've had all day <laughs> can't we like you said we've had great people on but i i think my next person i would really love to get together with mm-hmm. would be um someone that is like was born and bred here someone probably in their 80s that oh, okay. has seen and and I don't even know who that would be yet yeah but definitely I would like to hear just the whole we had the fanes on yes and so we got to hear the family history but you know I mean Ron is probably more my age than yours and um I would like an old timer you know, yeah. someone who's been here, seen things change. And yeah, so That'd be really cool. I'll work on that. Yeah, I think and broadly, more broadly, uh, I'd love to. We have so many different retirement communities yes. and um, homes where, that people have come. Like, I think we still have some. We may even have some World War Two vets. Oh, that would be I'm amazing. Like, uh, maybe one or two. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of potential out there. Yeah. That's awesome, right? Well, so for today, we're yeah. going to be getting together with 
Jesse, with Jesse the from owner the, of porch, the porch, and he has a great story. I know you're going to uh, to enjoy our time with him. Yeah, and so, without further him. ado, here is Jesse Viejas. So we have Jesse with us this morning. He is the owner of the porch. Thank you so much for getting together with us today, cheers. Jesse. Cheers. Thank yeah. you. Cheers Thank to you. you. I'm Jesse. Cheers to your big ears. Yes. I, I don't know. know your last name. What is your last name? Uh, Viegas. Wow. That's Viegas. Fun to say. Yeah. Okay. Viegas. Excellent. Jesse Viegas. Mm -hmm. And what is that, Jesse? Um, what is my last name? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. My last like name. Origin wise. Um, you know, that's a really good question. He has a once in a while. Okay. Right? Yeah, for okay. sure. Liked. I mean, you hear that and you think Hispanic, right? Um, yeah. But I don't have a lot of history or I guess knowledge on where that name originated from. Yeah. Um, because that's on like my dad's side of the family. Mm hmm. And I got daddy issues, so <laughs> okay. don't, don't we really all? <laughs> don't we all? Yeah, so I, I don't really know where that really comes from, but you know what? I'm I, I'm curious now. So okay, maybe I might. Viegas. Yeah, go, yeah. Go search that out. All I right. Like it in your Sounds spare good. time. In my spare time, exactly. Yes. <laughs> So Jesse, uh, I think that's a that's a good place to start. Is just kind yes. of uh, where where did you start? Yeah, yeah. Tell absolutely. us a little about yourself. Yeah, your childhood. Sure. Um, a really fair, easy uh, marker to start for me is uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I am a proud Phoenician. Uh, I'm a desert boy, um, yeah. and you know i i call that home um mm -hmm. i was born in kind of the downtown south phoenix region um and i have a younger brother okay and a younger sister shout okay. out to them yep shout out to jasmine and jovan oh, love, it. All love J's. it i love Jesse. all the J's. <laughs> yeah uh and my mother is johanna but a lot of hispanic Ready people will say Johanna like Joanna mm -hmm. so it kind of has like that J like all yeah. across the board um but Johanna so uh she's she's my rock she's um, amazing and any platform whether it's here in the business podcast me dancing like whatever um you'll see a shout out so shout okay. out mom hi yeah. mom I am a unapologetically mama's boy yeah uh, okay. for for all the right reasons yes um, so Maybe we'll talk about her later. Um, Hope so. But yeah, so Phoenix, Arizona. Okay. Grew up uh, my entire life there. Um, I've been fortunate enough to visit really great places. Yeah. Um, but I always find myself just very grounded. Um, okay. To Phoenix. Um, and and yeah, great school, middle school, high school, college. Yeah, you uh, went to GCU. Uh, GCU. Go and uh, M, just <laughs> I don't think Jeremy knows yeah, yeah. No. about your accomplishments at GCU. Of course. You oh, would tell go me. There. In particular, you would go there. <laughs> your YouTube accomplishments. You saw YouTube. YouTube. It's famous YouTube? at GCU. Right. The YouTube. You YouTube. were Mr. Yeah, what now? Mr. Okay. Universe. What was he? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Mr. Universe. That's good. <laughs> um, right? Yeah. I was Mr. GCU. Mr. Mr. GCU. GCU. Right Here he is. <laughs> So on today's broadcast, we have Mr. GCU, <laughs> yes, also known as Jesse. 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 Yes. 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 Yeah, we're, so we're on YouTube, how, yeah. can, how can our listeners and watchers find you yeah, yeah, on yeah. YouTube? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my how can goodness. they find you? Yes. They need to see it. You know, one, like, it's been a while, so... You know, we're digging in the archives here <laughs> oh, to find yeah. some like, like some old what, content. Four years ago, <laughs> so old, Jesse. No, no, it's actually really easy, Mr. GCU. Mr. GCU. Jesse, mm -hmm. and it's the first one that comes J -E -S -S -E. up. J E S S E. Yes. And it's the first one that comes up. <laughs> so and now, and tell me, what is Mr. GCU? Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. This is the story, you guys. Um, <laughs> Mr. GCU is a, in my opinion, um, back then and even now. Uh, a very fun, silly male pageant that the school hosts every year, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, and like high schools do this, and yeah. like you know, people are are kind of aware of like these kind of uh, events. So I got dragged in to participate in Mr. GCU um, just through my friends in college, and I was like very resistant towards it because. Like going into college in general was just, I was in an interesting season in my life. Um, so 
though I wanted to learn and educate and build community, I also just was not trying to be in like these spotlight or like attention moments. Um, and that's what Mr. GCU is. It's like the whole school is like watching <laughs> like this panel of guys and the <clears throat> the things we had to do was one was like perform a like a um, like dress in formal wear. So there's a okay. formal formal like contest and then there was a it's like a tuxedo right yeah. exactly there's a formal contest there was like a swimsuit ah, contest oh. right. no way <laughs> yes. gcu yes i know right right and then the last one was like a skill or talent okay, okay. so full-on pageant yes yeah. full-on is... pageant there you go like a male pageant there you go yeah yeah exactly <laughs> i love it so um, what'd you do for your skill or your talent jesse yes um for my skill and talent mm -hmm. i i danced mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah so the way i did this dance was um so i've never been like a formal dancer like formal training yeah. um i just grew up like in the streets and with rhythm and with a mom who loves like salsa mm -hmm. and like this hispanic flavor nice. and then you know my my dad um you know he grew up and kind of like infused a lot of like kind of like that hip-hop and like that west coast uh flavor um kind of like that gritty style of dancing yeah right? jeremy knows oh yeah he, oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah I, mean, I got that that's kind of his style right yeah, yeah big time right mm -hmm. on the so, weekends right <laughs> so that's just been a natural appreciation like you'll find that come out just out of nowhere but there's never been like this like i said official training um so anyways right uh I'm like, if there's is a talent I have, you know, at this point in my life, like it's probably dancing, but I don't know. It kind of fits what Mr. GCU is trying to do. Uh, so anyways, I was like, OK, I can do that. However, like I said earlier, I was in this very interesting season of my life as I was going into college um, and I didn't want to like hold that. I felt like that was worth expressing. Mm -hmm. So here I am in this like pageant, but there is something really big going on that's not so silly in my own heart yeah. mm. like this just feels very natural to like merge the worlds wow. okay um so what i ended up doing was i ended up like getting with a friend and we sat down in his studio we had some microphones like this and i'm telling my story mm -hmm. into this microphone and we're, <clears throat> we're recording it and in my head, I wanted to interject with music that spoke to that era of my life or that person in my life or that, you know, um, just season of my life. Yeah. And then uh, and then when I would interject with that music, uh, I would dance to it. Okay. So I would tell it's my story as a story. As it, yeah. Wow. yeah, as yeah, he yeah. It's beautiful. Thank you. It was yeah. fun. Um, originally, the one on YouTube is uh, addressed to a student body. So you're going to hear like language like students fellow students you're going to hear like gcu you're going to hear like these because it's geared to a student body yeah i eventually went to do that for about a stretch of two to three years um at and then i made it more general for like a general public and yeah. then i performed it at conferences churches um uh camps even quinceaneras like <laughs> so so like fun. almost like yeah. a a testimony or exactly. like a, the story of your life yeah mean, Interpretive dance. Yes. I mean, would you exactly. call it interpretive dance at that point? Or? Jeremy, okay, yeah. you're so great. That's it. Well, yes. there you go. Yes. <laughs> awesome. It really that's is, cool. and I brought it up because I really, I, I was moved by it. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Ray. Yeah. So check it out. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. Mm. Yeah. So then, well, thank you. The purpose of Mr. GCU is it is it like awareness for something? Uh, is there some greater purpose, or is it just kind of a student body thing that's like, hey, this is kind of silly and fun. This is this is what we do. Yeah. Um, if I remember, and unless it changed, yeah, I think the original purpose was silly, fun, something that the student body can kind of like rally, rally around, around and like build some energy. Yeah. Uh, for me personally, obviously it was more and yeah. it became more. Yeah. Um, and we're still talking about it right. in 2021. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And Love you know, that. I think people are still able to watch it and I can look back and roll my eyes like, oh, what a, what a, what a silly season. However, um, I do remember the impact that it did have. And mm -hmm. I'm like very thankful for that. Yeah. Um, and if that does still, we're able to reference that in a, mm -hmm. in a special way, like I'm totally for that. So mm. that's good. Mm. Yeah, good. that is good. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, so from Phoenix, Jesse, mm -hmm. how do you end up here? Yeah, absolutely. Prescott. Yeah. So I um I actually 
started to have my foot in Prescott, I would say dating back to like uh, 2011, 12. However, it was only in the summer um, at like one or two months at a time, uh, because you guys probably are well aware of um, this is a big camping town yeah uh, so there's like tons of camp it's like Beautiful camp central camp right grounds. yeah um so tons of you know schools uh churches nonprofits, sports teams come up here in the summer to have like their summer experience their summer camping their summer planning whatever yeah. it may be right mm -hmm. um so i would uh i was a part of a camp about five minutes from here up the hill up country club called chapel rock mm -hmm. um and i started to go to chapel rock uh as a staff member um and i ran programs and then i helped out with music and i helped out with kind of like more of like the leadership uh component to it mm -hmm. um even even a counselor so i was a counselor there as well and then i want to say i'm just man I'm losing track of time here um i want to say so i did that for a stretch of time mm -hmm. and then i want to say about five years ago i actually became the director of that camp so uh, i went from being really a staff, yeah okay the youth portion yeah let's let's just for clarity shout out to kelly wood kelly wood's the <laughs> okay. director, director of the camp. <laughs> right 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 uh but i was just the director of the youth camp um, just yeah, yeah just, just the direct yeah yeah so that was good and um then i started to spend even more time up here because not am i i'm not only coming up here as a staff member but now i'm just like running the show mm -hmm. um so i would come and i would experience prescott only through that lens actually mm -hmm. only through the summer camp it's a pretty good lens, lens. yeah yeah because you know you're away from 110 degrees mm -hmm. um, you yes. are up here in this beautiful yes in the beautiful mountains with you know everything that the camps have to offer but then we would escape because like we're in like this camp world and we just want to get into town and like run the square and like you know fun you know yeah check out everything that the town had um yeah. so yeah that was kind of my introduction to prescott okay mm -hmm. prescott wow prescott. Right, right. Prescott. Come on now. i know right <laughs> um and then 2019 mm -hmm. is when i had an opportunity um to purchase what we're now in the, yes, we the, love the, the business porch. the porch mm -hmm. um, and, and real quick i'm sorry yeah, let's sure. go back to gcu and what did you study there did i miss that yes no i didn't say it was uh, i studied social psychology social so psychology blend of sociology and psychology yeah. okay which is really great and pretty pretty general right mm -hmm. when you yeah. think about it because you know study of people groups people. and social like structures yeah. um and then the study of the self and mm. the mind yeah. um and i felt like those two just arenas were, were were was something that i felt like i could just take anywhere mm. right you know um smart yeah and who knew right uh, i would be in you know ministry and a business owner where yeah. i'm dealing with you know my own health and <laughs> psychology uh but also i get to create hospitable places that um engineer culture and that's a big yeah. kind of social approach so and when it. you went into that program did you kind of have uh, a little bit of an idea or understanding of like okay this is where i want to apply this or was it kind of wide open at that time yeah you know i think like a lot of college students it was wide open okay. unless like you go in just like laser focus like this is right. what i want to do and this is what i'm gonna do for the next 15 years um that's just that wasn't me uh yeah. i had a little bit of background with some like behavioral health agencies um like really just part-time job so i was like oh like this could be something i you know would work forward to um but no to be honest it was okay. just i had more of an open kind of you know idea of like w what's next okay yeah, yeah good yeah so. okay so then fast forward now mm -hmm. 2019 mm -hmm. yeah opportunity presents itself and how did that opportunity come about yeah I that's kind of a fun story yeah i love telling the story so i think it was the summer of the summer before 2019 which would have been 2018 i'm at chapel rock it's summertime right this is where i'm spent all my summers and i i love playing basketball 
Okay. Um, and to this day, shout out to the YMCA. Okay. Tuesdays and Thursdays, they play open gym basketball from okay. 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. Oh, okay. that's no. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's an early time. Yeah, it's early nope. time. You I was like, oh, that sounds fun. No, right. it doesn't, it doesn't right. sound fun anymore. There's nothing about that that sounds no. good. Right. So um, it was a it was a Tuesday or Thursday morning. Um, I leave camp. I go and um, playing basketball and I meet um, a bunch of guys that summer. Uh, but one in particular that kind of stood out was uh, Landon Myers and Landon is the pastor of Restoration Church. Um, and we share a building with Restoration Church. Um, so we just like it's funny because when I tell people this story, how we connected, mm. people call it a bromance on a court that we had. <laughs> so it, it just naturally. Hi, hi. hi how you doing? Hi. What do you do? What do you, a coffee oh, shop. Yeah. Oh, when I coffee, oh. it, it really turned out like that. <laughs> nice. But anyways, I became really great friends with um, Landon and his family. Um, and uh, at the time, his parents uh, owned the porch. Um, so it was very natural for me to like come meet here because it's a coffee shop, right? Yeah. Um, so that was my first like introduction to the porch and i'm like oh wow like didn't really think much of it i was like oh this is a cool spot like i have another place to go to other than wild iris you know right, right. Uh, <laughs> that was like my only knowledge of like coffee shops at the time mm -hmm. um so that's how i the the porch kind of like got introduced or mm. like coming back to prescott um which was last year coming back to prescott was in the summer um an experience that I never had before because like I came to Prescott with no intent to go back to Phoenix and that was a new thing right okay. um, because of now being the business owner of um, of the porch so yeah um, long the, the short version is it was on the court at the YMCA where I met Landon there was a connection here there was just some shifting going on here um, mm. and through my relationship with him and his family they knew a little bit of my heart my story uh, where I was at in my life um, and I think they knew enough that I was open and maybe um, that I would be a good fit for them to ask if I wanted to buy the porch and catch a vision that they casted and but i would eventually catch mm. to continue mm. um and that's what happened um, wow yeah so i'm here <laughs> what is yeah. your vision jesse what would you like to see mm -hmm. happen in your community here at the porch yeah absolutely because so, i know you have one <laughs> thank you ray <laughs> vision's good right vision like, is really know where important you're going. um okay so my vision for the porch and would, american warehouse and american warehouse we're not just talking about a coffee shop Absolutely. so so where where's that distinguishing line what's american warehouse yeah. versus what's the yeah. porch yeah absolutely um that that's a great question um i mean there's actual um physical boundaries if we want to get like okay. really technical but i think for right now like let's stick to like the visional the yeah. vision boundaries like we're where, where we kind of distinguish is um, the porch is a coffee, as a cafe, it's a boutique ca coffee shop, seven to three. Okay. Beyond that, it can be whatever you want it to be. And now the American warehouse really takes identity. Right. Oh, okay. So we can host, we have hosted, let's just say yes. that weddings. We've hosted conferences. We've hosted workshops. We've hosted baby showers, banquets, like fundraisers. So all of that. My old agency. Yeah. Um, used the studio. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was a great spot. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, the range that this place can um, offer yeah. um, is incredible. Okay. Right? And um, we're, we're growing. We're trying to find our identity and our market and our, I guess, position in the community to let the community know that this place is more than a coffee shop, um, but it is an actual um not only event center but a gathering place mm -hmm. you know because when you think event center i think you just think like grand right uh but no this is a gathering place chandeliers yes. right mm -hmm. yes. yeah. yeah yeah so you no, can have is... yeah you can have a special intimate wedding of 300 but also yeah. you can invite 10 of your best friends to have a private party for you and yeah. it and we can accommodate that, it and it'll be special. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the American Warehouse. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's really um, cool. That's kind of the vision, and that's like that. still kind of growing, right? Uh, to your initial question on like my vision for mm -hmm. the porch. So I mentioned earlier, um, 
So uh, the previous owners, they they actually uh, created the name The Porch, which is I think is cute, right? It's great. Um, but there's also these three pillars that came with the name. Um, uh, and that was coffee, conversation, community. community. Yeah, um, love that. And yeah, they're I think they're buzzwords, right? They 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 attract um, just at face value. I looked at that and I'm like, oh, that's cool. But now you now the ownership is changing, right? And in my zero experience of owning a business, mm. I can only imagine when like when you own something or there's a transfer of ownership, like you put yourself into it now, right? Sure. Oh yeah. Um and a lot of like I guess my experiences, my hope, my you know, my my approach is definitely like infused but also continuing to develop. But one thing that I felt like I didn't have to change because what I mentioned earlier, right? Some visions um, you cast, right? And that's from the ground up. It's from an, uh, an idea that didn't exist, but you, you, you spoke it into existence. And that's really special. And I think a lot of businesses or nonprofits or whatever you create, like that's necessary. But then there's some things that there's some visions you catch and that's something that's been created already and now it's your job or your responsibility to sustain it mm. if that's in line with who you are and what you do sure uh so coffee conversation community was existing i didn't cast it i caught it but now the way i put my heart into it is this is how i define it right mm -hmm. right so coffee um is product it's our teas it's our coffee it's our breakfast sandwiches everything that we offer for to drink and to consume um and we love that and we 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 work hard to make that the best that we can with what we have okay yeah. but then our job and i share this with my staff and um you know people who uh, are helping me with with the porch is like the we want a standard quality of all of our coffee and of our, our products because once we have that standard we can now we can move on towards that second pillar and that second pillar is conversation and conversation can be defined as relationship building it can be defined as engagement with community it can be defined as hosting a podcast in your space mm -hmm. uh, come on <laughs> um right so the list goes on and then once we're there, now we can move on to, in my opinion, my favorite, which is community. And that translates to transformation. And in, I think it's, it's an incredible sight to see when you can watch lives transform in front of you. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of businesses don't get that opportunity no, it's true. Um, because business are designed to create transactions and move on and progress and grow we want that obviously to sustain yeah. however there's a currency that's bigger than money here and i think that's transformation and love um, and that's what we get so mm -hmm. yeah we love our coffee and we hope you guys do too we do too but the more we can build relationships, the more we can build community and watch transformation. I, I can't stop smiling. <laughs> nice. I mean, this is just yeah. my heartbeat, right? Absolutely. Like, oh my gosh. Right. And, it, and, and it's unfolding You're a in brother front of from us, another you mother. You get, it's unfolding in front of us um, because I think what I just described is unfolding, right? We have product, we have conversation, and we're watching community happen and we're watching yeah. transformation. I mean, you guys have started. X amount of months ago and just to watch you guys grow um, and be empowered and encouraged and the people that you brought in and now that eyes are on you like wow you know who would have thought like mm. that is what happens when you think of a business and the hopes of what the business would put out to the world yeah. so that's really good yeah yeah coffee's great but like yeah. if we can have more <laughs> so things like good. this you guys like we're winning you know I yeah. love that no, so, that's really yeah. cool. Yeah. Oh, so the uh, there's a there's a part of uh, of all things Pirates of the Caribbean that comes to mind where <laughs> they're talking about like this is like oh yeah 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 okay. follow me follow okay. me here okay. we're follow with me you. here we're with you. So uh, Jack Sparrow has this whole thing and, and they're like talking about the ship right? And he's yeah. like no 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 those, those are the things that ship has the sail the rigging like that's what a ship has what a ship is is freedom and like that's that's a whole thing like this coffee shop like it. It, yes, it has coffee. That's like the rigging and the sail and, 
And if you get some of those things wrong, well, people aren't going to initially come for that thing. But what this place is about mm-hmm. is transformation. And so there's okay. there's this whole like sea that we're sailing upon right now of, of taking people from one place to another. And I like what you're saying. Yeah, obviously we're going to do coffee well because we don't want that to be a hurdle. Right. For people having a place to gather, mm-hmm. for people to have conversation. And if they're talking about like, oh, yeah, this isn't so great. Well, that's not the conversation we want. Right. The conversation we're facilitating here is building community and like friendship. And I mean, I'm having a hard time. Hey, sh- I think we should get together at the porch and can we have, you know, and, and so then it facilitates yes. everything else that truly this place is about. Yeah. But it's its function uh, yeah. is, is that thing of coffee and, and doing things, right. you know, right. So I think it's a Good. really, really cool vision that uh, that you have. And, and definitely, yeah. um, I mean, for us, too, this is one of those those areas that as we sat and we met with you and like, hey, what do you think about doing this in this space? And, and just that common thread for all yes. three of us of like, yeah, look, we yes, we have these things. Mm-hmm. But our, our true desire is for people to connect, for there to be more community, for right. people yeah. to understand the stories that are happening behind the scenes. Yeah. That when you do see someone in the store and there's a whole thing behind them that they're bringing to this moment for yeah. good, for bad, whatever. But then it can be transformed into their story connecting with your story. And it, it is. It's a really cool thing. Yeah. So yeah. that's awesome, Jesse. Yeah, Thank you. Jesse, you're well you're the right person. No oh, yeah. doubt in my mind. This yeah. Um 100%. yeah, hundred percent. Well, you're the well right thank person. you. It's it's um it's things like this too that really <clears throat> affirm and confirm that I am in the right place at the right time. Um, you know. So truly, I you know, when when I came here, I've one never owned a business. Um, number two, like coffee house i had appreciation for but i also had zero reference on how to do it Mm. um so coming into it i think there was a lot of just such a natural (laughs) there's a lot of hopes and desires and also things that i really was like like prayed for Mm -hmm. you know um that would help me um live into what i felt was a wonderful business journey um but also something beyond that um and when you guys approached me about this this was one of those uh just confirmations that Mm -hmm. what we're trying to create what we're trying to facilitate um really is just there's harmony of Mm -hmm. what you guys are doing and what you guys have started um you know when you guys initially had those conversations and what it would look like um for however long it goes or where it goes um is to be told however initially what you guys you know wanted to do just really in line aligns with mm. what the porch is so mm-hmm. i think it's very natural um, it's awesome and truly like what you guys are doing is what the porch seeks out to do so thank you guys thank you for really for thanking us um, <laughs> yeah thank you for really just yeah making this vision come to fruition so mm-hmm. absolutely yeah. no that's 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 really cool yeah, yeah. so okay we're doing something a little new yes uh for sure. since our podcast broadcast is called getting together mm-hmm. we are going to start asking our guests sure who is one person from okay. history from where that you would love to get together with. And then we'd like a local person that you would like to get together with. Oh, wow. Name of someone. So who do you think your person might be that you'd love to get together with? Yeah, yeah, okay. So the first one, I'm I'm gonna, I'm just gonna like think bigger. Think big, think big. Go ahead. Jesus is off the table, by the Jesus way. Jesus is off the table. Jesus is you off the what? table. Yeah. Jesus, no. like, Jesus yeah. knows where I stand. Yeah. So. That's right. That's right. And he's with us always <laughs> yeah, already. He so understands. we get to meet with him anyway. And I'm also going to put aside those who like historians or okay. people who are not here because okay. they know where we stand. I got All right. enough for them. Okay. Nice. Um, let me see. You know, actually, I'll, I'll kind of connect this a bit. Okay. So you guys are... We you've started a wonderful podcast, which is amazing. Thank you. So I'm gonna keep it in the podcast world. Okay. 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 Um, someone that I would really, and they're not this. It's not a big name okay. unless you're like in the podcast. Um, okay. You might know this. Uh, 
but I am the really, suspense is mounting. I know. I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm really bated <laughs> breath. Uh, Jesse, it's actually it's it's a co-host, kind of like you guys. <gasps> yeah, yeah. You mean so like Jeremy? If, I, if I meet one, then I would want to meet the other. Spend time. So okay. they're a package deal. Okay, okay. package deal. Okay, um, a two for. Like her get name one. is Nigel. Okay, well that's and, pretty. Yeah, and his name is um, Erline. Okay. Erline. Well. Mm. Yeah, Erline. Um, All right. And I think if they're, I hope I don't get their names wrong. It's Nigel Poor and Erline Woods. Okay. Okay. And the reason I chose them is because um, one, we're on a podcast. I've been listening to them recently. Um, so Nigel Poor is a, I want to say she's a visual arts professor at um, a school, in, a university in California. Hmm. Um, and I think about a decade ago, she started volunteering um, at a prison. Um, and she was just doing a, a number of like volunteer works for prisons. And I, but that led into like her background with like visual arts um, and giving people platforms or telling people stories that kind of morphed into her experiences as a volunteer at the prison. It was like, man, there's these real stories that are going on in these prisons um, and outside of prison yeah. and the families of prisoners yes. oh, yeah. that is just um, not being shared. Yeah. Yes. Um, so there was this uh, really just sweet approach that she had of like dignifying this community um, of, of prisoners by giving them a voice, a voice and yeah. a platform. And the circumstances are different, but I think that's really sweet for what you guys are doing, right? Mm -hmm. Giving the people of a town um, a voice and mm -hmm. a platform to mm -hmm. share whatever they want to share, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so. I would want to spend time with them because yeah. I feel like that is a that's a really just area that the world doesn't get to hear. Mm -hmm. um, right. It's a it's a you know prisoners are you know the stigma that comes with prisoners and prisoner you know, like families of prisoners. Yes. Um, it's a lot. Yeah, there. it's a lot, and um, mm -hmm. I'm right there. So like, I think it hits home to me. You know, sure. My father being incarcerated. Mm -hmm. um, so I appreciate her work why she does it and then uh erlang woods um was actually a prisoner in san quentin uh, oh, where she was uh started this podcast and he he was just so moved and he became uh just a regular guest and then he started actually helping produce the podcast cool. from prison and i think it was two years ago he got released and now he is full-time staff oh my with, gosh, I have yeah, yeah. that's cool so the podcast is called ear hustle ear hustle yeah i, I like that it. that's awesome <laughs> um, and it's it's nigel poor and erlang woods and the reason why is because i think it's just this this beautiful picture of um someone on the outside seeing hope and dignity of yes. the system that sometimes just gets forgotten yes oh, yeah. and these worlds collided and now they're both doing something from just complete opposite upbringings um and now they get to yeah collaborate yeah. Mm -hmm. so, oh, really that's really good yeah that's yeah. so good they would be my like kind of big picture yeah like, yep it probably never happened but never that know be really sweet you never yeah. know getting together you should reach out to them yes right. we will <laughs> from one podcast i another, will right? that's right um do you have and, a local person yeah i was that thinking about that to um, sit down with yeah you know i will i think a safe one to say and the reason i say safe is because i haven't been here a long time yeah you know i've been like my first year here was a COVID year so like yeah. i didn't get out a lot my second year 2021 was demanding and busy yeah so i didn't get to network and get out the way i really wanted to um however i do know that there's a new mayor in town there's <laughs> yeah. a new man um, in town right and i i don't i don't know him personally yeah um but i think that's a very safe fair place to say like hey any city has a mayor they have influence they're connected right um so a collaboration or at least an invitation would be yes. really sweet. Sit down, um, have a cup of coffee. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So yeah. Mm -hmm. that's someone I would who would like just to get to know. Um, good one. So very good. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. Good, Jesse. So those are my my two. Love it. Perfect. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, Jesse, we're gonna have to wrap up our particular this particular time. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, but maybe you'll be you our again. regular. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. There you go. 
No, we do, man. We really appreciate everything that you've been like. It's been really generous for you to yeah. have yes. us come in this space, and then uh, we have uh, a little dedicated area every time. And yeah. so it, it's always one of those things where it's not. Uh, it's never felt like we're a subset of something else. Like you make us feel valued, Very which welcome. is really cool. So yes. I appreciate that, and uh, thank you, space. everyone. We value you as yes, well, we our listening and viewing audience. So thank you so much for getting together with us today at the porch on Mama, Montezuma Street here in downtown Prescott yeah, and it's absolutely. a great place to hang out it's a great place to uh to really form that thing of community to have conversations around a great cup of coffee so uh please like and subscribe we uh just are so grateful for you i think 2022 is going to be an awesome year of growth and expansion so Tell them. continue to uh to <laughs> yeah. continue to uh to to just get the word out and uh, we're excited to hear your story as well so uh thank you again and we'll see you next time on getting together, getting together. Awesome. Yay. All right.